ESPN presents College Basketball 81-82. From Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Jayhawks of Kansas face the team that's picked to be number one in the nation, the Tar Heels of North Carolina. When last we left, the NCAA is back in March. Kansas University had made it to the quarterfinals where they lost out by a single point to Wichita State after upsetting Arizona State along the way. And Ted Owens' outfit wound up with a 24 and eight record. North Carolina picked to be number one in the nation this year, 29 and eight last year. Won the ACC tournament, then won the Western Regionals, and all the way to the finals where they lost to the ultimate champion, of course, the Hoosiers of Indiana. And now, we begin our ESPN weekend of more than 90 ball games, and there's another one coming up later today here on ESPN. As we begin this great weekend, which has already seen the upset of UCLA and Georgetown out west and in Alaska. We're looking now at the Kansas University bench, coached by Ted Owens, now in his 18th year, and the Tar Heel bench, coached by, of course, Dean Smith in his 21st year. And the public address announcer now is going to introduce the players from both teams. And here's number 35, that is David Magley, a forward out of South Bend, Indiana, senior for Kansas. And here is James Worthy, number 52, a junior out of Gastonia, North Carolina, for the Tar Heels. Out comes Jeff Dishman, number 20, a junior out of Medicine Lodge, Kansas. And at the other board, there is Matt Doherty, a sophomore out of East Meadow, New York for Carolina. Number 24 for Kansas is Kelly Knight, injured all last year, a six foot seven center out of Salina. And Sam Perkins, a sophomore out of Latham, New York for the Carolina Tar Heels, who was the rookie of the year of the ACC a year ago. Now going to backcourt, here's the preseason All-American, Tony Guy, a six six senior out of Towson, Maryland. He makes things go. And the man who helps make this thing go for the Carolina Tar Heels, starting his first game ever, Mike Jordan, out of Wilmington, North Carolina, a freshman, big starting assignment. Number 25 is Lance Hill out of Baltimore, a junior. And here's the man, the point guard, Jimmy Black, the senior of the Bronx, New York, for the Tar Heels. So the introductions have been made. Ted Owens huddles with his group across the way. He is 16 and one, as Bucky has told you, in opening games. But as we said, how many times has he opened with the Tar Heels of North Carolina? Well, I don't know. And usually a, a traditional power like Kansas doesn't open on the road. In fact, the only loss that he had uh, in the opening game was in Lawrence, which is unusual in itself. It was to Vanderbilt in 1972. Ted oh. Owens and his club is very loose. Watching the end of their practice last night, they feel like uh, having won that game in Kansas City last year and playing the nation's number one team here in the state of North Carolina, that they can be loose and that the pressure is all on the heels. Well, I tell you, Bucky, on the other hand, the North Carolina newspapers say, how dare Dean Smith open up with Kansas? The team that beat him last year. He's number one. He's not tested against East Podunk. He's going against the defending Big 8 champions, and they are the Jayhawkers of Kansas. Carolina on the floor. White of the Carolina blue, of course. The dark uniforms, a dark blue lined with red, Kansas. And stepping in will be Kelly Knight, number 24 of Kansas. He is 6'7 against the 6'9 Sam Perkins of the Tar Heels. Perkins easily gets the rebound. That is Doherty. And of course, bringing it down court is Jimmy Black, number 21, the senior out of the Bronx, New York, setting it up as Kansas goes into a zone. Ricardo Perkins, good outside shooter. Black gets it in to Worthy. Worthy takes the first shot of the day. In and out. Knocked back and brought deck down by Tony Guy, who can penetrate. It's his job to run things from backcourt. Kelly Knight, the center, the high post. Carolina currently in a man-to-man. -man. Tony Guy with Black on him. Into the corner. From the side is Kelly Knight, and it's KU that goes on top. After Worthy missed the basket, Knight has the basket. Now Black will slow it down. Kansas showing 2-1-2 zone as we expected, testing the outside shooting of North Carolina. Jordan, the freshman, had a chance to shoot but did not take it. So from the corner, Black takes it, no good. Rebound underneath by David Magley, number 35. Here's Dishman, a surprise in practice. Magley, their top forward, Tony Guy. Guy drives. Knocked away. He had 36 points against Arizona State in the NCAA regionals last year. Underneath, that is Kelly Knight. Can't get it, so Guy's going to take the shot. It is no good, and there is Mike Jordan with his first rebound ever. And now he tries to have an assist for Worthy and does. And they're calling a foul on number 25, Lance Hill. 
Jordan, the freshman, started the fast break, has the assist, and Worthy scores. That's Jordan with a good bounce pass. James Worthy fakes baseline, and there's a chance to test the movable rims. It takes 230 pounds of pressure to bend that, Jesse, and he did. And as far as Hill, who's playing in his first major college game for Kansas, welcome to big time college basketball. Tony Guy, the preseason All-American for Kansas. Worthy, who missed that shot, is a preseason All-American for Carolina. Whoops, almost threw the ball away. Jordan keeps it in as KU stays in the zone. There's Matt Doherty that bunched on one side. Doherty missed last nine games last year with a broken thumb, but very consistent. Tries to get around his man Magley. Can't get the ball away, but Jordan's going to come down with it. Kansas really tight in that zone. Almost everybody is in the lane. They're really going to test uh, to see whether without Pepper. Jordan's first shot. It is no good. Pulled down by Dishman. Without Pepper and Wood, the, the outside shooting has to be suspect, and uh, Kansas is gambling uh, to, that, uh, to that end, and it's a good move always in the first game. Also... Carolina did not play the traditional exhibition game. This is really their first time out against outside competition. Perkins knocked the ball out of bounds, and here comes Hill. They want to get the ball to Guy. There's Dishman. Dishman trying to get around, and Perkins is called with a foul. Sam, rookie of the year, sophomore to Latham, New York. They expect great things out of Sam Perkins. They've already had great things out of Sam Perkins. He was rookie of the year. He got caught out a little high, a little anxious. Dishman making the baseline move. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, Sam Perkins expected him to drive. I think Kansas so far is a little more aggressive offensively than they anticipated him to be. We the score, excuse me, Bucky, the score is 2 nothing. The basket by where they did not count. It was a one-shot foul, and he did not make that. Let's make that clear. It's 2 to nothing, Kansas. Worthy's basket did not count. Magley from the side, and it is 4 nothing. as David Magley makes it 4 nothing, Kansas. Kansas coming down now, showing a little pressure, uh, which is a bit surprising because the Tar Heels want the up tempo. Well, you consider, despite all their experience of last year, Carolina's only starting one senior. Still a little tough, and that's the man with the ball now. Black getting it across to Jordan, the freshman. Jordan goes up and drops it through, and there is the first basket for Carolina. It's 4-2. Kansas showing a willingness to run. Lance Hill gets the ball inside to Dishman. Dishman can't get it away, loses it out of bounds. Double team there by Perkins of Black, and he lost the ball. Kansas guards are big, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. They're both good penetrators. i tell you one thing, Bucky. The Jayhawks do not look nervous against the team selected to be number one. That's Doherty. Still that zone, going up by KU. Black tries to get it into Perkins underneath, ball. But I think number 35, Magley draws his first personal foul. It seems no matter how tight you make your zone, Carolina tries to get that ball six feet further in. They've traditionally been a good uh, field goal percentage shooting team. That's one of the reasons why. They're, they're continually coming down your throat. They want it closer. Second team foul against KU. Doherty throws it into James Worthy, whose basket did not count because he was fouled before the shot. Doherty. Jordan, the freshman, now going to take it, pumped once and puts it up and no good. Knocked back by Doherty, picked up by Black and pulled down by Lance Hill. Hill, two on one, knocked away by Worthy, out of bounds, fine defensive play by James Worthy. Really was at 6'9", he was trucking down there to make that play, save the basket. Ted Owens looking on, 18th year at Kansas, Magley to toss it in. Guy goes up, the ball is knocked out of his hands by Worthy and it is a three on two with Worthy putting it in. And it is four all with 16.24 to go. One of the problems with the penetrating guards we just saw, Tony Guy took it in underneath the free throw line and when he lost it, there was not enough back to stop the Tar Heel pass. Guy has the ball knocked away by Black. Picks it up again, has it knocked away again. Quick hands by Black. Guy's gonna take it in though and miss the shot. Perkins has the ball go out of bounds, but it went off the hands of Dishman on the way out of bounds and the Tar Heels have a chance to go in front. Tony Guy trying to take advantage of a three-inch height advantage he has over Black. He backed him in that time, but he was still too far out. Jordan to Black. To Doherty, he takes his first shot. And Matt Doherty, the sophomore out of East Meadow, New York, makes it 6-4. to four. Kansas won the national championship in 52, runner-up in 53, and Dean Smith, the coach of Carolina, played for both of those Kansas ball clubs. Old alma mater. There's Lance Hill, left-handed shot, no good, but he was fouled on the way up. These two met again for a national championship uh, in 1957. 
The Tar Heels, coached by Frank McGuire, won that ball game in a triple overtime to finish 32 and 0. And the Kansas contingent at that time was led by Wilk the Stilt Chamberlain. Mike Jordan draws his first personal foul, and the freshman goes out. And Jim Braddock, a junior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, very strong, comes in. And they may move Doherty up front. In any event, they've called timeout. 15:34 to go after trailing four to nothing. North Carolina Star Heels now lead Kansas six to four. And we're back in Charlotte in a moment. Statistics, well, at this stage of the game, don't mean much, but UNC's hit on three of seven shots, 43%. Kansas, two of four, 50%. Each team has four rebounds. Each team has one turnover. There's only a two-point difference, as the statistics might suggest, Bucky. It's interesting they came for Mike Jordan very quickly. It looked like he was breathing a little heavy. It's certainly not conditioning. It's his first start as a freshman, and so many things have been said about him, comparisons to Walter Davis and David Thompson in this part of the country. That's, uh, that's pretty heavy metal for a, a youngster of 18 years old. He is talented, and he really is kind of going against the system. Dean Smith normally doesn't start uh, even the most talented of freshmen, uh, but this year he is. In fact, Perkins, it took him half a year and an injury last year to Pete Budko for him to make the starting lineup. Lance Hill gets two shots and misses the first. He's a junior college transfer, went to Eastern Michigan, then out to San Diego from whence they got him. But he's from Baltimore, very near Towson, where Tony Guy comes from. And he's one for two, and it is six to five. The Tar Heels lead the Jayhawks. And this Braddock, number 24, just came in. It looks like they've made him their point guard as uh, Jimmy Black is now on. Jordan's back in. Well, they took out Black after the timeout. Here's Jordan. That's Braddock. And there's Doherty. Kansas is still in that zone. Carolina loves to get it inside. Both Worthy and Perkins are standing side by side underneath the basket. And now Braddock from outside. And he's a little pistol they need. The junior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee makes it 8 to 5. Hill goes all the way in and is fouled by Braddock. And we'll get another shot. One of the decisions that Kansas had to make, uh, knowing that uh, North Carolina was going to test their ball handling, here we see uh, Lance Hill coming down, trying to make the play. Braddock really didn't have to be all that tough because backing him up was Sam Perkins coming over the top. Hill really didn't have a very good shot, but that's early game jitters, and Braddock has not had all that experience. Here's Lance Hill, one for two from the line. Black has come back in, and Jordan, the freshman, has gone out for Carolina. Ah, a little bit better rhythm there than he did on his first shot. Who is it that says foul shooting is all concentration? And he hits a six. Eight to seven. And here come Tar Heels. There's Black. Jimmy, a senior out of the Bronx. Roddick. Black hadn't taken the shot yet. Looked like he wanted to underneath to Worthy. Worthy loses the ball, and I think Dishman is going to be called with a personal foul, and that should be his first, the third team foul. Black is a reluctant outside shooter, which is one of the reasons the Tar Heels are going to see a lot of zone this year. He can put it up, and he's going to be forced to do that if Worthy and Perkins are going to have any room to operate underneath. Worthy at the line. He is 0 for 1. Shot of Dean Smith there. Played on that 1952 uh, NCAA champion at Kansas. I tell you, everybody will remember Dean Smith in Carolina for what he's done at Carolina and he's yet to do. I remember all that, but I remember 1976 in Montreal when he took a bunch of people, including those from Carolina, and went up and won the championship against a lot of odds. Ten to seven. That was in the 76 Olympic Games, of course. Now Carolina pressing a little bit. And Magley with an open shot has it go in. Hit the front of the rim, but it dropped in, and David now has four points, and it's 10-9. The zone press against those big guards is going to be tough because uh, at 6-5 and 6-6, they can throw over the double team, which is exactly what they did. And Kansas, more importantly, attacked the basket. Worthy is fouled by Tony Guy, who's hand immediately shot up in the air. And with 14 minutes and nine seconds to go in the half, that's four personal fouls already on the Kansas team. Going underneath, going right at the basket. Challenge was there, the foul was called out front. 
And if the fellow talking to Tony Guy uh, just before we went to the replay looked familiar, he should be. That was Jojo White, now an assistant coach at Kansas. Worthy is now two for four from the line, has four points. This is his fifth foul shot of this young ball game. And he's three for five. And it's 11-9. And again, Carolina pressing Lance Hill. This is a young Kansas ball club, although a lot of them are junior college transfers. Here's Magley stopping, shooting it, and does not have it. Dishman goes up, gets it, and puts it in. Fine individual effort by the transfer from Hutchinson Junior College, Jeff Dishman, and it's a tie game. 11 we'll all, 13.50 left first half. Kansas has made the decision. They're not going to play cute against the North Carolina pressure. They're going to take it right to the basket and take the good shot. And it's looking good so far. Roddick with Guy on him. In the zone, of course. He's the ball in. Perkins goes up, and I think he is fouled. Oh, it's tough under there. You almost needed a shoehorn to get that ball through that Kansas zone. It was so tight. Kelly Knight trying to help, pulled the hands down, but uh, the baseline official was right on the play. Perkins to the line for the first time. Sam, who averaged only 15 points a game last year, is yet to score this year. Told you, rookie of the year, most valuable player at the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. And a sophomore, 6'9". And a pretty good free throw shooter. That's not his strength. A little bit better than 62% last year. Five team fouls now on Kansas in this 12-11 ball game. Tell you one thing, Bucky Waters, and it is not original. It's good to see college basketball back. Oh, yeah, and what a start. <laughs> Two of the top, uh, three of the top four teams in the country have already bitten the dust, which is one of the reasons there's so much interest. Dishman gets the ball tipped down of bounds by Matt Darty on the way down. It belongs to KU. Carolina, first of all, the Associated Press, then United Press International, then Sports Illustrated said, oh, you are number one. And Dean Smith says, we got to prove that. Double teamed on Guy, gets the ball to Knight. Knight back to Dishman. Dishman is absolutely clubbed from behind. And that's Jordan who did it, his second personal foul. Both coaches have to be pleased so far. Dean Smith is seeing Kansas go against this pressure, which means that he's probably going to get the up-tempo game that he wants. Ted Owens has got to be pleased because Darnell Valentine is not out there. And the Tar Heel pressure is pretty good. So far, Kansas has handled it pretty well and is getting good shots. How about Dishman drops it in with a high arcing shot and can tie the game again at 13 with 13-16 to go. If this one drops through, which does not, Worthy has the rebound. 13-12. Carolina. Jimmy Black. Jordan remains in the ball game. They love him. As Bucky said, a lot of pressure on him. Outstanding freshman. What a way to start. Not only his first game, but against the defending Big 8 champions. Black is loose for his first shot of the game. Off to the side. Tipped up by Perkins. Battle underneath. And they're pointing at Magley, number 35. That'll be his second. And the sixth team foul. Well, the key thing about Black shot that time is he shot it soft. If he can just get that ball on the iron and keep it up there soft, Ted Owens a uh, little unhappy about the foul situation his club faces, but if he can keep that ball on the rim soft with Worthy and Perkins under there, that's an offense. I think he was also upset that they were going to let him shoot. He said, hey, wait a minute. Now, nobody was shooting. They're going for the ball, so they're not letting him shoot. Perkins from the side. In and out. Disman. Here comes Tony Guy, who has not done too much today. Guy has not scored. Dishman comes down with the ball. It is Dishman. It's all over the court. Guy goes for this ball as a very aggressive James Worthy was all the way up near midcourt. Tony Guy wisely. Zone. Wisely slowed things down in his new role as point guard. Magley shot went off the top of the backboard. Perkins gets it. Black brings it down. Point difference. Oh, what a shot man with his best. Worthy can't believe it. He's still down on the ground. The alley oop pass, and Worthy missed the shot. Ted Owens wants timeout right now. He wants no part of this crowd getting in the game and that baseline to baseline that he just saw. A After good timeout. After 18 years in Kansas, he knows what to do, Bucky. And that is called timeout. 12-10 to go. First half, Carolina 13, Kansas 12. Jim Simpson, Bucky Waters, and rebounding it is seven apiece. Dishman has three rebounds for Kansas. Perkins has three rebounds for North Carolina. 
The heels on the run right before the timeout. The alley oop pass to Worthy up there all by himself. It comes off the iron. Look at that defensive rebound. And Kansas playing very aggressively, but Ted Owens was not happy with the fact that nobody was uh, back there defending for the Jayhawks. And Magley threw up a god awful shot that hit the top of the backboard that set that fast break loose. Bucky, UNC has taken four more shots in Kansas, but they each have made four. So North Carolina shooting at 33%, and many of their shots from underneath the basket. Magley. Looking around, no one has been substituted yet in the Kansas lineup. This is Lance Hill. 13-12 the score. That is Dishman. He's played very well. And there is King, Kelly Knight, brother, who did not play at all last year. Hurt his knee and was out all last year, about 10 days before practice. And looky here, Kansas has the lead by a point. Black gets it to the wide open Jordan, the freshman, but he's covered up by Guy. Black. Also covered up as the zone begins pushed away on a fine play by Kelly Knight. And from the side, Guy has his first basket. And now it is a three-point lead for Kansas. A lot of the Tar Heels fans did not expect it to be this close this long. Well, I'm sure Ted Owens was concerned about this 11,666 and the Tar Heel pressure in an early blowout. He's got to be pleased with the tempo. His team has shown a lot of Worthy play. went up and down, and it was a late whistle. He absolutely jumped up in the air, came down, no whistle as he started driving. He said, hey, you were up in the air and came back down again. Last two times down, the Tar Heels not very patient against that really a collapsing zone. They're trying to force it inside of it. 16, 13, 11 minutes, five seconds to go, and Kansas is now in a position to go up by five. Guy with Jimmy Black on him. Dishman. Kansas moving with and without the ball. Having a lot of poise. Hill puts up a left-hander, and Lance Hill has five points now, but that's his first basket, and it's a five-point lead for the Jayhawks of Kansas. UCLA is already down. Georgetown is already lost. Look out, Carolina. Long way to go, but it's tough. Sam Perkins gets him back on the right track. Four points for Perkins, 18-15. Here's Guy. Looked like he wanted to shoot, didn't it? But gets the ball over to Hill. Hill shoots over. Jordan does not get it. Darley steps in, hands it off to Jimmy Black. Black throws. And a shot from the side by Worthy. Worthy now has seven points. And it's 18-17. Two quick baskets. Fine play by Black in the middle. He could have very easily been lulled into a charge, but he was under control, and Worthy showed some athletic ability at 6'9", pulling up for that one. Bagley to Dishman. Boy, he muscled that in there, and Jeff Dishman now has five points. I love where he's from, Medicine Lodge, Kansas. Yeah, and he's a championship discus thrower, and he needed all the muscle he could get that time. He just forced that one in the basket. 20 to 17, Jordan to Worthy. Perkins! Fine feed from the side by Worthy, and Sam was right there. Carolina's now attacking that zone by airmail. They're no longer play same plane passes, shoulder to shoulder, even bounce passes. It's now become Worthy and Perkins on the recipients of, uh, of those high lob alley-oops, and that's difficult to stop if timed properly. Turn around by Guy, and he puts one in, and for Tony Guy, he now has four points. And it's 22-19, Kansas by three, 9 20 to go, first half. The only way to stop that alley-oop pass is to put pressure on the passer. If he's got time with those two receivers, you're in a lot of trouble. And Owens is up, said, put your hands up high. Black over to the side, Jordan. And what are we gonna have? A charging against Black, I believe. Ivan Tate calls it, and I think he calls it on Jimmy Black. Black normally under control, that time he's drifting. Kelly Knight, 6'7", 240. Black's about 6'3", and about 170. The contact and Kelly Knight went down. You think there was a little acting there, Jim? <laughs> Five team fouls now on UNC, six on Kansas, and Tony Guy with Jimmy Black on him. Two fine guards. One much more of a shooter than the other. Here's Lance Hill off the foot of Perkins and out of bounds. 22-19, 8.56 to go. And a surprise here thus far, and the crowd, since it is such a surprise, they really have not come to the backing of Carolina. They've been setting a little shell shock. Lance Hill has a ball knocked away and out of bounds by Black, who reached over from behind. Fine play. Paul Hauser, the Atlantic Coast Conference official, making that call. This is a split crew, two from the Big Eight and one from the Atlantic Coast. Whoops. All on the side there, Dean Smith saying, the ball was knocked out of bounds by Carolina. 
There's Dean Smith went to Kansas. This is his 21st year. Better than 75 percent of his games. Better almost 80 percent the last 15 years. Nobody's been to more semifinals than he except John Wooden and he's the same amount. Guy from way outside. Good heavens Tony Guy. Six points. He's putting on a clinic at 6'6". Six, six. Last year he was the two guard. Darnell Valentine handled the ball. This year he's being forced to be the point guard and the score. And so far it looks good on him. 24-19. Kansas. That's Braddock with the ball. And Brust is now in. Number 45. He just handled the ball. Gives him some more strength, some more height, some more ability there. Worthy's the man he replaced. Black looked like he wants you. There's Brust in for the first time. Worthy is on the bench. One of the things you pointed out earlier, no change so far in the Kansas lineup. The Carolina team has been turning over, going into a much deeper bench. That may take its toll later on. Perkins, we haven't seen that blue team come in yet, where they substitute by fives. Black from outside, high arching shot, left through. Jimmy Black has his first points. 24-21. Dean Smith has not opted to go with a blue team so far uh, this season. He may do it later, but that's not part of the offense right now. Guy into the corner. Whoops. And a foul is called on Jimmy Black, and that will be his second. And that will be the six-team foul. And now Worthy comes back in, and taking the seat is Chris Brust, the senior. Brust comes from Babylon, New York. And now we see yet another man come in. Jeb Barlow is in. Wrigley trying to penetrate. He doesn't draw many free throws. Fine outside shooter. That time he penetrated and uh, created something. Darty's out. Jeb Barlow, a 6'8 senior, has come in. Kansas has got the ball, though. And they haven't made any changes yet. Guy does not count. Foul from behind by Sam Perkins, I believe. And for Perkins, that is his second. And the seventh team foul, and Guy goes to the line for the first time. And he is a fair free throw shooter, better than 78%. Ted Owens' team hanging in there against what many considered insurmountable odds. Two shots for Guy, and he misses the first. Owens says we'll be okay at the end of the Big 8 season. The way his team is playing now, they may surprise some people early in the season. Well, there are only four on this squad that have ever been in a major college basketball game, so he really does have a young team, but he hasn't shown us any of his bench yet. 25-21, Bucky to Perkins, who drops it in. Oh, boy. Sam now leads everybody with eight points, 25-23. Double teaming Magley and thrown away by Lance Hilda Dishman. One junior college transfer throws it over the head of another. That looked like a schoolyard play from Towson, Maryland. Uh, he knew the man was open behind him, and I'm sure Ted Owens wished he had hit the floor and just made an ordinary play because it was two on one. Worthy has come back in. Barlow has taken a rest for Carolina. Dean Smith, Doherty is back in also. That is Bradford with the ball, and that's Black. Kansas still in the zone. Tries to get the ball inside and taken away by Jeff Dishman. That was only the fifth turnover for UNC, but Kansas only has two turnovers, and that last one certainly uh, was blatant, but they have controlled the ball very well against the press. Tony Guy, high shot, and drops it in, and Guy now has nine points to lead everybody, and it's 27-23. He hasn't taken Black to the basket yet and posted him up, but he's going right over the top with that jumper. Six and a half minutes to go. There's Worthy under the basket for two. Nine points for Worthy. We may see Doherty take a shot at Guy at guard at 6'8", defensively. 27-25, Worthy kicked the ball on the attempted bounce pass of Lance Hill. The Jayhawks ball inbounds. 6.23 left, first half. Charlotte Coliseum, that's Ted Owens and staff. They realize they are in this ball game, and their team is showing a lot of poise against a team with all the publicity and was in the finals last year, the Tar Heels of Carolina. Black tries for the steal. Magley with a high shot from the side. No good. Dishman knocks it back to right to Jimmy Black of Carolina. Black tries to get something going to Bradford. He must stop. Perkins. Black. Worthy. Worthy's going to take the shot. And run. 11 points for Worthy. 27 all. 5.56 to go. Jimmy Black, who is really one of the fine point guards in the country, has five assists already. The crowd's Double in it now, Jim. Dishman's going to take a shot. Nobody's there to help him if he misses, and he missed. Not a soul under the basket, and Dishman elected to take the shot instead of set something up. And now Carolina can go ahead again. That was a 17-foot jumper, and Dishman shot at 18 feet. 
Zed <laughs> Owens jumped up and said to his freshman, easy, easy. They really are in this game, and they've got to be pleased. With five minutes and 38 seconds to go, Zed Owens just wants to hang in there and be in this game at the half. Mike Jordan has come back in now for Carolina 23, the freshman, and that is he handling the ball on the far side. Braddock, Worthy, Perkins, and Darty, the other men. Kansas remains with its same five. Carolina showing a little more patience here. You know what they want to do, get it inside, and they can't quite get it inside. And Worthy stepped on the baseline, trying to get around Kelly Knight. That referee nearly swallowed his whistle. Worthy didn't like the call, and he ran at him and put that ball. He didn't hit him, but he just laid it right in his middle. It looked like he was going to force feed it. Full court pressure now for North Carolina. They've shown six defenses so far, Jim. Five tenths to go. First half, Tony Guy gets the ball to Magley. Two on one. He takes the shot, and Magley's got it. Six points for David, the senior out of South Bend, Indiana, and it's 29-27. The Jayhawks refuse to buckle. Well, they're sneaky, you know. They, they, they're doing well against the pressure, but they'll take that open shot. Darty in the corner by himself is Jordan, the freshman. No good. And there's Tony Guy, the guard, under the basket. Guy starts it running. He'll have to wait because a lot of folks still coming down court. Knight is clear for the shot and puts it in. Kelly Knight now has six points. Odd looking shot. They're almost a bullet. Really is. You know, he was counted on for big things. He came on strong the end of his freshman year. Lost his entire sophomore season with a knee injury. He can really shoot it. Perkins puts it in. Sam now has 10 points. Eight from the floor. 31-29 Kansas. 4.15 to go first half. Dishman almost threw it away. Hill's got it. This one's a pretty rugged, consistent player setting a pick on Perkins, but Hill can't do anything about it, and it is Hill that knocks it out of bounds. Hill turned around and said, me? It was you, Lance. I'm sorry. Well, Hill's got the problem of the typical schoolyard player. He gets up in the air and then tries to make a play, and Carolina has too much size and quickness to do that once you get in close. Time has been called. Bucky Waters, Jim Simpson. We're in the Charlotte Coliseum. 4.03 to go. First half. Opening game of the season for both ball clubs. Little to choose. Kansas 31, North Carolina 23. 11,666 looking on, and about 11,000 of them thought that Carolina would probably be leading by about 10 at the moment, as it is. They're trailing by two. First half, and Carolina is out rebounding Kansas, but only by one, 10 9. Bucky, it's about even in everything, and with those shots underneath by Perkins and Worthy, UNC has now come from 33% shooting up to 57%. Carolina's hit five of the last six times down the floor. Tar Heels can tie it at 31. Kansas, same defense, same people, no change. Well, they're successful with it. Why change? No need to confuse. That's Jordan. They're cross court to Dart. He's going to take the shot. Good looking shot, but it rolls in and out. And there's Kelly Knight to get the rebound and Tony Guy to bring it down court. You make a good point, Jim, especially with an inexperienced team, which Kansas has. Guy looked like he forced that shot, but off the back rim, and Knight now puts one down and off the hands of Worthy, but he keeps it inbounds. Perkins inside toward Jordan, knocked away, picked up by Guy. Now preseason All-America carries it all the way in. With the left hand. Points. With the left hand, what a penetration. He was under control. Four-point difference. Three minutes to go in the half, and it is Kansas, not Carolina, that leads. Hardy. Jordan cuts underneath into the corner. And stepped in. Mike can't get it away either, so Darty's going to take the shot and has it. Matt Darty now has four points. 33-31. That shot at the top of the key isn't as easy as you might think against a 2-1-2 zone because both those guards are 6-5. The key now, Jim, I think is fatigue. That same Kansas 5 has been out there all of the time, and they're starting to make the little fatigue mistakes as we're seeing now. And, of course, the one thing you have to remember about North Carolina, they can score them in a hurry, and they can get away from you quick. And it's 2 minutes and 37 seconds, and Kansas has to hold on. They're tired. Tony Guy turned it over with a double dribble of all things. But he was being double teamed. We're in the high post, Perkins along the baseline, black with the basketball, and that is Darty who just hit from the other side. Black's gonna take a shot over Guy, and he's got it. And he's got a tie game. Jimmy Black now has four points. It's 33 all, 2-10 left, first half. This is something. <laughs> what do you think? Boy, we hit the second half. 
Double teaming again, gets the ball to Dishman. To Magley, Kelly Knight, out to Guy. Over to Hill, who's loose, will take it to the basket. Knocked away by Worthy. The ball was on its way up, knocked down, not goaltending. Doherty feeds it off to Worthy, can't get it. Mike Jordan has four points, Carolina's got the lead by two. Even though there's less than two minutes, if Carolina gets another break like that, Ted Owens will call timeout. The run and jump now by North Carolina. They're going for the jugular. They want a quick six, eight points here. Jayhawks looking now for the poise. Their man, Guy's got the ball. Hill goes up, fouled from behind by Worthy, and that'll be his first personal foul. But in the act of shooting, Hill will get two and can tie this game up. Lance has been to the line twice, each time for two shots. Missed the first, has hit the last three in a row. Hill going in the last time. He wedges back in. He actually leans back into Worthy. I'll say one thing, he drew that foul. I'll say another thing, he's pretty brave. He just blew in there the last time and had his shot rejected by Perkins to start that fast break. Second time down the floor, he goes right back in there. Jeff he's Barlow tough. comes back in. Doherty is out, and Kansas has not made a substitution in the entire first half. 35-33, still 35-33. Hill with a chance to tie it with 1.26 left. Misses on the first. He's now three out of five from the line. I think we're seeing uh, the fatigue mistakes, the free throws, the double dribbles. Got that one, 35-34. And here comes Carolina. Braddock. Kansas in the familiar, 2-1-2. Two, two. Jordan, the freshman, getting added. Poison confidence puts it in. Now has six points. 37-34. Magley, Barlow is on him. Magley will have to calm things down here a bit. They've got the time with 104 to go. Guy puts it up. Wow. He was fouled by Jordan. And for Mike Jordan, that's his third. Guy puts an awful lot of pressure at 6-6 with that ball. Watch now. He comes in, plants the feet. He gets at the free throw line, gives the good ball fake, gets Jordan, the rookie, up in the air, and it really kind of glides in there. He knows he's got the foul. Now it's a question of whether he's got the three-point play. That's a senior against a freshman. Now that is Matt Doherty, 44, has just come in. as Guy with a total of 11 points, one for two from the line, five field goals, comes in. You just wonder, will it be Tony Guy, our Vitalis player of the game at the end, or will it be Worthy or Perkins or Dishman? 37-35, as that does not go. 56 seconds left in the half. Carolina up by two. They trail by as much as five. Barlow gets the ball out to Doherty, who takes a shot. In and out. Worthy goes up, turns, and puts it up. No good. And Mike and Kansas may get the last shot. 40 seconds. Let's see how they play it. And he's holding up his hand, and I believe Ted Owens is saying, we want the last shot, folks. Let's go to here. No worse than two down than maybe tied. Dishman, 28 seconds. It's very difficult for an inexperienced team to hold it this long and get a good shot, especially against good man-for-man -man pressure. Over to Magley, who is loose and is going to take it and drop it through. Eight points for David Magley. 15 seconds to go in time. 10 seconds, Braddock with the ball, Brust with the ball, Barlow with the ball, five seconds, Darty with the ball, four seconds, Braddock takes the shot, it is no good, one, it is no good. The half ends in a surprise, 37 to 37. And Bucky, you and I talked to some people here at courtside, and most of them are saying, well, I know it's a little bit tough, but Carolina will handle them. Kansas has lost too many people, including Darnell Valentine. But here we are, 37 apiece. It's no fluke, Jim. Kansas is playing smart. They're playing poised. All right, Bucky, and I'll be back in just a moment. The North, University of North Carolina picked number one in the nation by no less than three different polls, 37, and Kansas picked not even in the top 20, 37. It's a tie. Capacity crowd, Charlotte Coliseum, and hello again. I'm Jim Simpson with Bucky Waters, and it's time now for Bucky to look at statistics. Uh, looking first at the team totals for Kansas, shooting 60% from the floor, 15 for 25, only 7 for 12 from the line, and uh, had they made those free throws uh, coming down the stretch in the first half when they were tired, they could be leading at the half. 
Going to the Carolina team stats, 16 for 28 at 57 percent from the floor, and a very respectable five for six, 83 percent from the free throw line. Looking at the individuals, of course, Kansas far and away. Tony Guy with 12 points, five for nine from the floor, two for four from the foul line. Only foul trouble uh, for Kansas is David Megley with two and Kelly Knight with two. Looking at the North Carolina team stats, uh, Worthy with 11 points, Perkins with 10, no surprise there. Uh, Jordan, three for six from the floor, a good uh, shooting percentage for a rookie, but he does have three personal fouls and is the only man in the game in foul trouble. You know, with the score tied at 37 all, even though the scoreboard shows Kansas 37 and North Carolina 7, now they've corrected it 37 all. You get to wondering, Bucky, UCLA fell on Friday night, Georgetown fell on Friday night, Carolina's in trouble. Who's to say they won't run away in the second half? You never know, but I'm wondering if this basketball season might not be similar to the football season we've just gone through with no fewer than six teams, number one, in a space of 11 games. And, of course, you play many more than 20 games in college. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, it's, it won't be a new trend because uh, we're, we're looking at a, a, a real parity in terms of talent. The freshman eligible rule is one thing. Dean Smith is quick to point out with his number one rating it's since UCLA went back to back to the final four in 74, 75, no one else has done that. So it really is a year to year proposition. And this Kansas team right now has got to be on a high. And I look for the first five minutes of this second half to be crucial. And I'll be anxious to see. I don't anticipate that Ted Owens is going to make any changes with what's been good for him. As Ted, uh, what was a Texas coach, Dale Arroyo, used to say, you dance with who brung you. And right now he's had an outstanding 20 minutes of basketball. I, I think, never heard him say that. I heard him say three things can happen to you when you pass the ball in football, and two of them are bad, but I never you advance with what brung you. I thought, I thought that was Woody Hayes, but, you know, <laughs> I never followed minor sports. <laughs> but Carolina, it'll be interesting to see what new things they're going to do, if any, or whether they're going to just stick with what they did and Dean, figure that their bench will wear them down. Dean Smith looking on. Remember, after the tip in Atlantic Coast Conference play, you don't have a tip-off to start the second half. It's whoever got possession of the first, the next team gets possession of the second half. That's a national rule this year, Jim. That's right. Well, it's the first game. I haven't seen any other but ACC. <laughs> Here's Guy. Dishman. Can't get it away. Tony Guy goes up and puts it in. And Tony Guy now has 14 points. It is Hill 25, Magley 35, Guy 34, Kelly Knight 24, and Dishman 20. For Kansas, and they're back in their zone. Darty 44, Perkins 41, Worthy 52, Jordan 23, and Black with the ball 21. Each team starting the same teams they started in the first half. Worthy shot misses, battle underneath, and Hill takes it out of midair, but he better slow it down because there are five Tar Heels down court and only Lance Hill of Kansas. 39-37, Kansas got the first basket and got the rebound when Carolina missed, and now Worthy. What a fine play, grabbing that ball away from Dishman. Now Magley gets the long pass intended for Doherty down court. Here's Dishman. Knight, he'll take the shot, and he's got it. And I think I said Knight, that's Tony Guy. His second in the row. It's Kelly Knight, I believe. You're right. The jumper, yes. Here's Doherty. Guy has one, Knight has one. Here's Black. I'm trying to get untracked, and so is North Carolina here in the second half. It's 41-37. That's a big Kansas zone out there. Kelly Knight's playing center for Kansas, and, and offensively, he's really out of position, as he's already shown us. He's a great facing the basket jump shooter. Forcing the ball inside. Perkins had no room at all. Kelly Knight crowding him with that big body. You know, I saw Kelly Knight come out to warm up for the second half, and that knee is bothering him. He's very stiff. Underneath, whistle blows. And I think it's Dishman drawing his first personal foul down on the court. Kelly Knight, who sat out all last year with a knee, came out and was really flexing that knee of his, which you can see bandaged, and was limping on it noticeably. Well, maybe once it gets warmed up again, he'll be okay. Well, one of the things they tell you when you have an injury like that is don't take him out and let him get cold. Certainly, Ted Owens didn't do that. It was a full 20 minutes for Kelly Knight and every one of the Kansas starters in the first half. Matt Dart, he's taken only a few shots and hit about two out of three, I would imagine. And now this is the first time to the line. And he's one for one from there, five points total. It's 41-38. It's 41-39. And Dart, he shows a good shooting eye. And Carolina continues to press. That is Lance Hill 
And now to Kelly Knight and now Tony Guy. Guy will try to bring it across the 10 second line. It's the ball to Magley. Magley feeds underneath to Dishman who blows the snowbird. Here's Black. Almost turning the ball over Black is but does not. Worthy to Darty, who just does not miss off him but does there. Whistle. Jordan is foul as he goes up. Hauser turns around and says it's number 24, Kelly Knight. Darty off the rim on the other side. Wayne Jordan, a jumping jack, gets a piece of that ball, keeps it alive. Not a shooting foul. It is the third foul on Kelly Knight, I believe. It is the third on Kelly Knight, but not a shooting foul. 41-39, Carolina with the ball inbound. Ted Owens going with him with three early in the second half. Perkins. Black, Jordan in the corner. The freshman hit. Eight points for Mike Jordan. Out of Wilmington, North Carolina, 41 all. Start of the half at 37 all. 17.40 to go. Way underneath where Magley's all by himself. A good punt fake on Sam Perkins. And Magley now has 10 points and Kansas the lead. Kansas comes right back at you. This crowd wants so much to get in the game and see a streak. Kansas will not let it happen. Hardy. Black is loose. Guy tries to cover him up but cannot. The ball goes over the backboard. It belongs to Kansas. Well, we talked about the good part of his outside shot. If he just keeps it on this side of the board and soft, that one went over the top. But Jimmy Black already has six assists in this game. Tony Guy has 14 points. The first basket of this half. He's got the basketball now. Black right with him. Dishman. I tell you what, if Ted Owens does this, it's going to be with mirrors almost. He's got a lot of people in there that nobody's heard of before this year. Two they have. Magley and, of course, Tony Guy. There's Dishman, and that ball counts, and he's fouled. Well, the Hutchison Junior College transfer is some kind of strong underneath. This is the second one that he's muscled in there. He takes it right up in your face, James Worthy, right through his hands and in. And Worthy draws the foul. That is his second personal foul, and Dishman is to the line for the second time. One for two in the first half, now has seven points. In addition to throwing that discus 179 feet, he was a high school quarterback. No good. Well, I'd like to talk about Tyler Peacock in Kansas. He hadn't gotten in. He's a world high jumping champion. Seven, five and a half, one on the World Cup live on ESPN from Rome. But he hadn't gotten in, so I can't say that. There's Black, and there's Jordan. He hits from this spot, but does not this time. Nobody on this side of the basket. Doherty comes down with it. Ball knocked away. Doherty gets it. Kansas zone tough. Carolina has been able to get inside, but not nearly as much as they'd love. Black tries to take it to the basket. Does. He'll almost put it in. So they're going to put it in. He'll almost put it in. Perkins did. It's 12 points for Sam. 45-43. Kansas. 16 10 to go. Magley loose on the side. He can hit from there and does. Four points in this half, 12 all together. Kansas will not relinquish that lead. Magley, some, some kind of fine outside shooter. I kidded him last year about playing in a tuxedo. He never gets fouled, but he's got great range. Perkins has it all knocked away by Knight. They're going to call goal tending, so give Sam Perkins. <laughs> His 13th and 14th points, 47-45. Well, when you Time think about it, call. when Perkins shoots the ball from that range, it's got to be coming down. <laughs> Time is called, 15.49 to go in the game. Kansas, the Big 8 defending champions, 47. Carolina defending ACC tournament champions have picked to be number one in the country, 45. A reminder, Thursday, December the 3rd at 9 o'clock Eastern Time Live, UCLA knocked off at home, no less, over the weekend. Goes against Rutgers of Tom Young and Tulsa. Winners of the NIT will face the same Carolina team. You'll see that Friday, December the 4th and the 3rd at 9.30 Eastern Time. Well, I tell you what, we've got a lot of basketball, more than 90 games coming up on ESPN right on up to the championship final four. I'm glad you to be with us, and I hope they're all like this one. 
I had the privilege of working at NIT last year and saw Tulsa up close for two nights. They're a dangerous club, and they come into Chapel Hill. As you pointed out, we're going to do that game next Thursday night. I'm looking forward to that. Tulsa, they got the afterburners. Much different than Kansas. Very quick. That's going to be quite a turnaround for Carolina to go from Kansas to get another team in between. But, I mean, to go from this kind of zone defense and almost steady play to the afterburners, as you say, of Tulsa. 47-45, yeah. Kansas, they've got the ball. The lead pass to Dishman, who puts it up. No good. Followed by Kelly Knight. No good. Knocked back. It'll be picked down by Black. Coming up down court. Feeds underneath to Worthy. Knocked away on a fine play by Tony Guy to David Magley. Guy with the basketball now as they come the other way. Kansas just does not allow that poise to diminish. Hill, no good. Short. Pulled down by Perkins. And now here's Worthy. Worthy feed to Doherty. By Kelly Knight, his fourth by my tabulation. Those rebounding totals are significant. 14 now for Kansas, 21 for North Carolina. The heels are running. Worthy on the side with the big dribble, penetrates to the middle, nice bounce pass. Matt Doherty using his body, takes the punishment, gets the good spot on the board, and will have a shot at a three-point play. Well, the officials say that is the third personal foul on Kelly Knight. We'll check on that, but the score is 47 all, and when we come back, Worthy will be looking for the first three-point play, play of the game. Well, there's some consternation here at courtside. We've got Kelly Knight with four personal fouls. The scoreboard says three personal fouls. They've got four personal fouls on Magley. We've only got two personal fouls on Magley, and everybody along this side of the table is in agreement with us. However, the other side of the court, and now they put up four for Kelly Knight. Four for Kelly Knight, who is staying in the game. I was going to say all the radio and TV people here are in agreement, and the official score on the other side, he's the one that counts, had it differently. All right. Matt Doherty, who is two for two from the line and total of eight points, will try to complete this three-point play to put Carolina ahead for the first time in this half, and he does. And now Kansas will try to come from behind. Perkins on this ball really is problems for the press. Kelly Knight is going to have to shake loose. Perkins with those long arms. Kansas wants a timeout, a good call. I thought it was a very gutsy decision by Ted Owens to go to go with Kelly Knight with four fouls with 15 minutes to go. Well, we have come back, and now we're going away again because Ted Owens says we want timeout. Let's regroup. Carolina 48, Kansas 47, 15.02 to go, and Owens and Smith are talking to their men. Charlotte Coliseum, 11,666. Most of them Tar Heel fans watching North Carolina in its first season game in a season in which they're expected to do something they've not done under Dean Smith, at least, and that is win the national championship. They have a six-point lead. It was tied with about 14 minutes to go, but Kelly Knight fouled out with 13-15 to go, and Carolina's opened up a six-point lead. At one time, it was eight. Sam Perkins is going to take the outside shot. No good, and a whistle, and I believe Doherty gets called with the foul. It'll go down. That's who it is, Matt Doherty, and for Doherty, that's his first personal foul. He has a total of eight points. Hold it, 10 points for Matt Doherty. And his first personal foul. Not a shooting foul. Martin puts it in to Lance Hill. Now they want to get it to Guy. He can bring the ball up very smartly. Remember, he has been a little out of control. And as Ted Owen said before the game, he is the catalyst for the poise, for the patience of his team. And he kind of lost that poise and patience there for a stretch. There's Martin. Lance Hill with that left hand of his. And he's got it. And a foul call on Jimmy Black. Hill puts it in. And Black draws the foul. That's his third, and it's 57. Should be 57-53, but maybe it was before he shot. Now they put up 57-53. He can make it 57-54. The rebounding stats tell the story. Here's a replay of that last one. Hill with a double clutch up and in. The 6-5 guard up over everybody. Draws the foul from 6-3 Black. And Hill does like to take advantage of his size in the backcourt. He is 4-6 from the line, Bucky. And if he's five of seven, they'll be within just three points. No, sir, it's still a four-point difference. Worthy gets the rebound very strongly. 57-53, ten and a half minutes left. Rebounds in the second half. 15 for Carolina, six for Kansas. There's your story. Braddock is back in for Carolina, number 24. He's on the far side. Got the ball right now. Black. 
Braddock, he had some hot shooting moments in the first half. Doherty trying to get inside against that never changing zone of Kansas. If they put some wrinkles in it, we haven't seen them. Bradford from outside, no good. Fine rebound by Dishman, who's very tough. 57 53. One corner to Magley, to Guy. Into Martin, knocked away by Sam Perkins. That one was skyjacked. Perkins got it on the way up. Roddick almost by himself. Gets it to Worthy. Ball knocked away. Now called on Tony Guy. And Worthy. that will be his second. So explosive inside. And the thing that makes him dangerous, not only his leaping ability and strength, he's such a fine passer. He was second on the North Carolina team last year in assists. Ted Owens all the way up, almost to half court, staying with his team. He still has to be very pleased. It's a four-point game. Worthy is three for five. This is one and one. And he'll get the second. That is 16 points for James Worthy. Sam Perkins has 14 points. Tony Guy has 18 points for Kansas. 58-53. Six-point lead again. Oh, that's what you call ten tentative. Magley takes it all the way in. They've been taking some shots that are from downtown and off balance, but that one goes in, and it's 59-55. I look like it. Can you top this? That's about 180 with a 10-foot jumper on the end of it. Those are not good shots, and North Carolina will run them down your throat if you don't hit them. Doherty. That's Hill all over him. Less than nine minutes to go now as Perkins has the ball in the corner. Worthy tries to put it in and does put it in. 19 points for James Worthy. Here's Guy. It is 61 55, six point lead. 8 39. Now jump ball because Guy did not take it inside. Tony Guy has 18 points, but in the second half has not had the team leadership type qualities that Ted Owens will need from him for the rest of the year. No, and they're missing uh, they're missing Kelly Knight too. Brian Martin is just not the force in the middle by any stretch of the imagination. Now that time uh, Carolina gets the ball because of the alternation uh, on jump ball situations. I'd really like to see the defense get that call all the time. That's a great defensive play to tie him up for five seconds. Perkins cannot get it away. Hello. Underneath. Go that is Worthy. Yes. Does not count. Worthy smiling. It's an offensive foul. He wedged the defense out, which is a point of emphasis. And in basketball, for many years, that offensive man really had a license to steal. Let's watch. Does he wedge out? Yes. He uses his shoulder to try to get that advantage. It was a good call. Three on James Worthy now, many personal fouls. And now, Kansas, if he can get that patience. And remember, Carolina's playing tough defense. Kansas can pull within four. And they throw the ball at Worthy when he tried to throw it across court. Nothing good happens. Look at Worthy! Showtime! 21 points and an eight-point lead. Guy takes it. It's tipped away by Perkins, but thrown right to Hill. It gets a little sloppy. Hill takes it in, left-hander puts it up, no good. Hill knocks it back. Magley misses the ball, knocked away, still no whistle to Hill. If Ted Owens unbuttoned his shirt right now, his heart would fall out. He wants his team to show some poise, and they're just, they can't get it up there fast enough. They're still very much in this game. Tried to throw the ball clear across court last time, and Worthy naturally intercepted. Hill takes it in, in and out, no good, tipped up by Dishman. Perkins comes down with it. Eight point lead, they can go up by 10 with 7.20 to go. Braddock misses the shot. Pulled down by Dishman, they're still alive. Magley one on one down. He's gonna take the shot with nobody to help, but oh, drops it through. What a shooter. 16 points for Magley, 63-57. Kansas narrowly averted a 10 point ball. Black will slow it down for Carolina with 6.59 left. Kansas down court without Kelly Knight who fouled out about five minutes ago. There's Perkins, goes up, an easy little shot. 
Took a little while to get in, but he had it right in front of him all the way. 16 points for Sam. Really exploiting Brian Martin in there. The Hutchison Junior College transfer was recruited late, and uh, he just doesn't have the experience or the body to contend with that inside game of the Tar Heels right now. Eight-point lead. Now the oop to Dishman, who goes up, and that's a fine move on Sam Perkins by Dishman, a junior college transfer who now has nine points. How much longer can Kansas stay in that zone? I don't know. Six points the difference, 6.22 to go. North Carolina 65, Kansas 59. Capacity crowd, Charlotte Coliseum, and we'll have the final 6.22 in a moment. Carolina's cheerleaders running off the court. Kansas walking out from your right. They're down by six points with 6.22 to go. And Carolina has been in the driver's seat and seems to be moving. They have not yet broken it apart. They had a chance to go up by 10, but avoided that. We're going to get a chance to see that last play. Super steal by Worthy, pushing the ball up the floor. 6-9, the big man. Showtime, double clutch <laughs> in your face. It has been the big men that have really uh, put this surge on. In fact, Perkins has eight rebounds this half, and well, Kansas has Bruss. eight as a team. Chris Bruss, 231, brought the ball inbounds, number 45, 6'9". Tall as Sam Perkins, but weighs a lot more. Carolina has elected to keep playing against the zone. I thought after calling that timeout, they might pull him out, show him a little four corners. Barlow is coming again for Carolina. So it is Perkins, Barlow, Black, Jordan, and Brust. And Kansas has come in with Tad Boyle, number 33. Here's a third substitution they've made. 5.45 to go. Not your classic four corners by any stretch of the imagination. Carolina in close, but still moving the ball around the perimeter, trying to get it inside. Well, with five minutes and 30 seconds to go, the clock is not a, a, a you know, an all-important factor yet. But Carolina sure is able to eat a lot of time off that clock looking at that zone. I think Ted Owens has to come out and push him a little bit. And that's going to be, I think it's going to be difficult. He's got a tired team. Black's got a shot. Oh, has he got a shot all by himself. And Jimmy Black now has eight points and it's 67-59 with 5-10 left. Now here's Tony Guy. Preseason All-American. Doherty's up along the bench for Carolina will be coming in. Here's Doyle that we told you about. Not going to take the shot. It is taken by Martin off to the side and Mike Jordan. Well, you can see this freshman grow up in this game. The way he went up for that. Black feeds to Brust. They call blocking or charging. And they're going to call blocking. And Brust will go to the line. Here come the heels on the fast break. A little showtime at midcourt. Black goes behind his back. All off the steal by Jordan. Brust coming in. Really put a little offensive pressure on the defense that time. Brian Martin really didn't really didn't hold his ground, and yet he got called for the foul. That's a smart play. Guys at North Babylon make that play a lot, and I'm kidding. That's a <laughs> Long Island move by Brust. He'll get two shots. Less than 60% free throw shooter last year, and misses the first one here. 67-59, Carolina, 4.50 to go. As I look at this Carolina team in just this 37 minutes, I think uh, it's going to be the bees that make the difference. Black he has to stay healthy, and then Barlow, Brust, and Braddock, six, seven, and eight. They're going to determine whether or not the Carolina gets to the Superdome and maintains number Carolina's one. has got to play Southern Cal this week, then Tulsa, then South Florida from outside. Shot to Magley, and then they get Kentucky after Christmas. Ten points in this half for Magley, 18 altogether, 67-61. The Tar Heels have not put away the Jayhawks yet. 4.20 to go. Six point difference. Dean Smith looking at that clock. He's got to be thinking about pulling out a slower, tired Kansas team. And now Black signals the freshman Mike Jordan to come out. Perkins is way outside. Doherty is playing the post. And now Perkins moves in. Russ does not take the shot. Run time off the clock, about 30 seconds since we last looked at the clock. Carolina's still moving the ball around and moving seconds off the clock. I think Ted Owens has to come with a little half-court trap. Something, something to hurry. Try to get that shot up. Brust in the corner. You don't think he's going to take the shot, so over to Jordan. Back to Brust, and then the cross-court pass. Intercepted by Magley, who is a pure shooter, and he's been shooting well and hits again. 
And that's 12 points in this half and 20 altogether. And a four point difference now for Carolina with 3.25 to go. Bagley almost called for Kansas fourth timeout by mistake. Ted Owens very much in this game. Down four. Didn't want to use that precious timeout. I think we can look for four here. 67 63 310 left time is called Carolina wants to talk it over 309 left North Carolina 67 Kansas 63 we're to sell out crowd and shot at North Carolina 67 63 Carolina call timeout and let's just see what happens like it is the first game of the year I keep looking for the four corners I just wonder with 309 to go and a four point lead and the Tar Heels having the basketball what Dean Smith really did call for. I'll tell you, there's another good reason to run it. Magley's hit seven straight field goals, and if there's a way they can keep him from getting the ball, it's to hang on to it themselves for a while. Worthy, Barlow, Doherty, Jordan, and Black to throw it in. For Carolina, Hill, Guy, Magley, Martin, and Dishman. For Kansas, and there's no four corners here, folks. Shooting percentage is just about even. 56 for Carolina, 54 Kansas. Actually, it's the free throws that have hurt Kansas. Worthy feeds out. Couldn't get it away. 2.49 to go. Four-point difference. Carolina's in a tough one, and they call Charlotte a neutral court, but this is the Tar Heel State. Well, yes. this really is at four corners. It's a, it's a spread. Uh, it's been around a long, long time. It's a little different than the four corners, which they really haven't run that well since Phil Ford. Well, he made the four corners in my estimation, Bucky. Yeah, of course, uh, Ted Owens had six weeks to get ready for this game. He well, he flies right past Martin and puts it away. He just flew Martin right out of there. That's what you call isolating your big man, and he is assertive. Worthy put that ball on the floor and just exploded. 23 points as Magley comes back, misses this time. Dishman goes up. Martin comes in. Ivan Tate calls a foul on Worthy, who walks away, and for James, that's his fourth. He was being followed very closely to Ivan Tate, the big eight official. But it's off the iron. Worthy going up hard for a heck of a battle underneath. Dishman wins the battle. What we didn't see in a replay, there's Dean Smith. He's a little upset with things. 69-63, and Dishman was only one for three, was fouled, and Kansas gets the ball back and a chance to draw within four with less than two minutes to go. They have time. They're showing some patience here. Guy gets it in. Whoops, and there is a charging foul on Martin, his third foul of this half. Just a tremendous difference in the Kansas team uh, when they lost uh, uh, Kelly, Kelly Knight. Knight. Yeah, the, he, he was a force. Uh, the little jumper, the turnarounds, and defensively his body, they just haven't been the same. It's Ted Owen says, we want timeout, Bucky. We want timeout. Six minutes to go. We gave the ball away again. Turnovers were about even. And then when Kelly Knight first went out, they brought in Mark Summers and the junior out of DeMitt, Texas, Went ahead and threw the ball right to two Carolina men on separate occasions, which cost him four points, and then committed a foul that cost him a fifth point. He's not been seen since. On came uh, Brian Martin. He has committed three personal fouls, and he has yet to score. Top-ranked boxing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, this Wednesday, December the 2nd at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific time, live from the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Hey, I've never heard of this. They've got a 10-round cruiser weight. I, I get to watch top-ranked boxing more often. I've heard of the 10-round welterweight and the lightweight battles, but a 10-round cruiserweight? I don't know. In my neighborhood, though, we didn't go by weights and titles. It was called survival. Well, I know that I've, I guess I've just lost out on boxing lately, but young Joe Lewis and Junior Royster will go against one another, and young Joe Lewis is 23-0 with nine knockouts. That's this Wednesday from the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City. Remember the times, 9 Eastern Live, 6 Pacific Live. One of the most popular features. I don't know if you call him a cruiserweight. Anybody that's 23-0 and 0 and 9 KOs, I call sir. Here's Worthy. In the isolation, they spread Kansas out, and it's no contest. Brian Martin, just no way he's going to stay with Worthy. And this is the reason we were looking for the spread uh, a little sooner than that. 
Well, there are only six minutes, uh, six points difference, and 149 to go. We've got to start thinking about a player of the game. So you get together your little notes and your impressions and your statistics, and somewhere along the line, we'll tell them who the athlete of the game is, in our opinion. Carolina's got the basketball, remember. And we'll toss it in, worthy to put the ball inbounds at the far end of the court. Kansas down by six, and time running out. Kansas they, has a tough schedule too. They'll be in the holiday festival later this month against uh, Indiana, Villanova, and St. John's. It'll be interesting to see how their bench comes along because you only get a bench one way, and that's playing it. Like Carolina, they got to face Kentucky also along the line. Carolina with the ball, time all in their favor, the scoreboard in their favor. Coming back is Perkins, is Darty. Darty's going to slow it down. Now. Kansas. Kansas out of that zone. They got to come out and get them, and they're coming out trying to get them. That is Hill on Doherty. Some double teaming by Kansas there. They've got to take a few chances now. And of course, the foul priorities here. Ball are is taken away. Magley, he's got to remember he's got time, takes the shot. It's a bad shot with nobody down court. He did have time. About a minute and 20 seconds, only six points down, and he took a poor shot. Well, it's hard to fault him, though. He's had such a hot hand, and he put up a few like that that went. I think uh, Kansas should be fouling uh, uh, Mike Jordan, the freshman now. This is, this is one area where his inexperience might show. Jordan's getting away scot-free. He's got the ball now, and that's Guy all over it. But they're letting Jordan go to the basket. And there was a foul on the way into the basket. Jordan was fouled, but that's not the way they wanted to foul him. Good acceleration. Jordan taking it in. Everybody had a shot at him. If he's a little bit shaky on his free throw, I think we can look for Kansas to grab him a lot. Dean Smith directing traffic. Jordan to the foul line for the first time. Well, his inexperience did not show there, did it? He now has 11 points. Ted Owens, his team gave the good fight till with 13.15 to go. Kelly Knight went out and down went the Kansas Jayhawkers. 70 to 63 with 51 seconds to go. And Jordan hits both. We have our most valuable player of the game. We'll tell him to you in a minute. Bagley throws it a prayer and it goes in. He has 14 points in this half, 22 altogether. 38 seconds to go. Doherty. Black handling that pressure beautifully. Doherty now dribbling around back court. The man with the ball right there, Jimmy Black, I think is going to get our vote as the Valley Talis most MVP as Doherty goes in. Black did not get a great deal of points, a total of eight altogether, but he has run that team from back court. He has kept the poise when Carolina was down. Doherty at 6'8", moving in. If you remember Jim Spinarco and you like Spinarco, you love Doherty. A smart player. Looks Doesn't have like great speed. Yep. Yeah. Just, just plays the game. Makes the right pass. Gets a loose ball. Percentage player. Very smart. Four for five from the line for Doherty. 11 points altogether for Matt, the sophomore out of East Meadow, New York. It's 72 65, seven point lead. Carolina's got this. They don't have to worry about that front cover jinx. At least they passed their first test against a very thin but very talented Kansas team off the hands of Bagley. Bagley now forcing a shot, but he's got to because it's late and it goes in. And timeout, 73 67, 13 seconds to go. 16 points in the second half. For David Bagley, 24 altogether. It'll be interesting when ESPN sees what we think will be the nation's number one team again against the NIT champion of last March, Tulsa, on Thursday night, whether or not Carolina is still number one. You know, in 78, Carolina was preseason pick number one. They played Oregon State right here on this court in the opening game. They won by 31 points. And when the poll came out the next week, they were second. So, so much for the polls. However, with Georgetown going down by six points. Uh, well, there's a replay of uh, Magley with a, what you call a basic uh, a prayer shot. Has nothing but iron and cotton. 
he's got to be living right the way he throws that ball up. But going back to my point with Southwest Louisiana beating Georgetown in the Alaska shootout and BYU beating UCLA in Pauley Pavilion, I can't think of anybody else challenging for number one after this win today by the Heels. A reminder here to our live coverage that there's more live coverage tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Pacific Time, and Pittsburgh goes down to the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and that is a team that in the preseason is listed as a team that is in the top 20. So that'll be a big game here on ESPN. That is Ivan Tate. And those are the Carolina cheerleaders, and they've got 13 seconds left. The game belongs to Carolina, barring one of the greatest finishes you ever saw. Yeah, because well. They've got six points with 13 seconds to go. Carolina had one against Duke a couple of years after I coached there, where they were down with 30 seconds. They were down eight and won the game in overtime. So anything can happen, but I would think Carolina has this one. Worthy to get the ball in. And gets the ball into Sam Perkins. The big men pull it off. Ten seconds to go. Here comes Doherty. Black. Seven. Six. He need not shoot. He can just dribble around. And now grabbing on to him is David Magley. Very nicely. 24 points for Magley. He has had an outstanding offensive game. The inexperience of Kansas. They needed to foul immediately with 13 seconds. They, uh, they allowed nine seconds to get off the clock. They had to grab Perkins right away. Uh, they, they couldn't be too choosy about who was handling the ball. Bagley is through. And on comes Tyke Peacock, the world champion high jumper. We finally get to say that we saw him on ESPN Live in Rome. So that jump better than seven feet, five inches. Seven, five and a quarter he jumps. High jumps at six feet. That's that's almost unbelievable. Especially when he's 6'1". He you jumped call, about a foot and a half how taller than what he is. You call three seconds on him because he goes up in the air and doesn't come back down in three that's seconds. That's a violation, isn't it? Black. He's had an outstanding game. And you know, it wasn't his kind of game because Carolina never really got the transition going. He had a crack at tough Kansas defense. That's Magley along the bench there with just four seconds to go. 74 67. Misses this. And down comes Peacock. Well, that's it. Never even got the ball across the 10 second line. 74 to 67, the final score. Yeah. Well, let us, what do you think of Mike Jordan? Well, freshman. Well, people are comparing him to Walter Davis and David Thompson. He really is a good player, and under a lot of pressure today, I thought he performed. He's an extraordinary athlete. He's a better guard at this point than Thompson was, and he's certainly not the shooter that Walter Davis was. He's going to be a great one, and he has shown me that thoroughbred something that, that responds to pressure because this was a big game. All right, I'm Jim Simpson for Bucky Waters. Our first game of the year has been a great one. Thanks to you for listening. The final score, North Carolina defeats a very tough Kansas squad 74 to 67.